On Wrestling Observer Live, we are here every day, Monday through Friday, noon Pacific, 3 Eastern, Sunday, 3 Pacific, 6 Eastern. It is Tuesday on this program, and you know what that means? We have news coming out of Monday Night Raw. WrestleMania is now two weeks away, and we're going to go over the lineup for the WrestleMania show as of last night. And uh, for those of you keeping track, because how could you not? Seth Rollins still does not have a path to WrestleMania. Although, they didn't exactly do the idea that I came up with yesterday, but they basically did the angle at the end of the show where he still couldn't get a path to WrestleMania, and he said that he Raw will not go on the air next week. Raw will not take place until he has a path to WrestleMania. So, whatever they're doing, presumably Cody Rhodes, but nothing's official till it's official. Whatever they're doing, it appears to be... Uh, the tease for the very first segment of Raw next week. So we could talk about that here today, the entire Raw show. We have got uh, DJ, which is different from a kid, a kid. He'll be performing at WrestleMania. We had a lineup for both nights thus far. We got the expected match for Omos, a pre-show for WrestleMania airing on the WWE Network. Braun Breaker versus Robert Roode tonight. Robert Roode was defeated in the middle of the ring clean last night. We should still care, apparently. We got SmackDown ratings. We got Rampage ratings. We have the full Raw report from last night and much, much more. If you'd like to text us here today, join the show. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. That is 425-780-7566. Brian at WrestlingObserver.com. At Brian Alvarez on Twitter. No Mike Sempervivi here today, but he's going to be back tomorrow. I'll tell you about that in a moment. So stand by, Wrestling Observer Live. Indeed you are, Wrestling Observer Live. Ryan Elver is here. No Mike Sempervivi here today. So I don't know what the hell happened, but uh, Mike was doing something, and he banged up his knee. And uh, one of his knees is swollen to about twice the size of the other knee. And so he's on the way to get his knee checked out. So uh, hopefully he's all right. Wishing the best to him. We'll uh, get details later on. But uh, that is the story about why Semper Vivi is, is not here today. It was not because he did not want to watch Raw last night. And uh, I'm sure he's very happy he will not be here for the Raw report today. But you guys, you will get the Raw report here later on. But we have a lot of news coming out of the Raw show. So we're going to start with that first. I'd also like to mention that uh, 2 o'clock p.m. Pacific, 5 Eastern today, we normally do our live Lance Storm show, and we are going to do that today, live, 2 p.m., 5 Eastern, and uh, this will be on all video platforms, all right? All video platforms can watch the show. That means if you're on YouTube or Twitch, you can watch the Lance Storm show, because it will be our live Q&A Lance says, ask me anything, okay? So uh, if you're a Twitch homie, a Twitch subscriber, you will be able to uh, put your questions into the little chat box right there, and we will ask Lance, and uh, whatever you want to ask him, now's your chance. 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern today, live, twitch.tv, as well as video.f4wonline.com. So get those questions about MGF ready, because I want to ask him. It's coming up later. A DJ, which is different from a kid, is set to perform for the live crowd at both nights of WrestleMania 38. Valentino Khan, these cons are taking over, will welcome fans with the hottest hits in music, it says, as they arrive at AT AT&T Stadium for each night of WrestleMania 38, April 2nd and April 3rd. Words cannot express how hyped I am to be playing WrestleMania, Khan said, utilizing words. It's a Super Bowl of sports entertainment. I've been a lifelong fan of WWE, and to be a part of such a massive two-night event is a true honor. I cannot wait to play at AT AT&T Stadium. See you all in Dallas. Words cannot express how hyped I am. For this show. So he's going to be playing some music, it looks like. The lineup for the show thus far. These are the official matches. There's more to come. We have Charlotte Flair versus Ronda Rousey for the SmackDown Women's title. Don't care. They have done nothing. 
I mean, they've done a lot, but I don't care about this match. Like, whatever they've been doing in the build and whatever, I mean, it just, to me, is like, it comes off as two people that don't want to be there. So, I'm not saying they don't, but I'm saying that, like, whoever's doing the coaching for Ronda Rousey and Charlotte Flair, eh, I'm not feeling this one. Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair. I'm feeling this one to a degree. I think Bianca's going to get her big win at WrestleMania, celebrate with the championship. Everybody's going to be happy. So I'm looking forward to that. But, bro, if I see one more interview from Becky Lynch talking about how it's because of you fans, we're, uh, we're moving into Ronda R- uh, Rousey and Charlotte territory of stuff I'm s- just absolutely sick of seeing. We have the KO show with Stone Cold Steve Austin last night on Raw. Kevin Owens played the role of Steve Austin. Clearly, this guy was a big Steve Austin fan since he did a great job. And uh, I think it's going to be fun. And I, I still, like, I don't know if they're going to do it. And my, 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 if you were like to put a gun to my head, which don't, but if you were and you said, is this going to lead to a match on Sunday? Uh, my gut would say no. Uh, do I think it's impossible? I do not think it's impossible. And I think it would be quite the deal if they if they ran the angle on Saturday to shoot the angle for Sunday. Although that sure would make people who bought tickets for Saturday pretty angry if they weren't going on Sunday. But I don't think there's a lot of people that aren't going on Sunday. We have Ray and Dominic versus The Miz and Logan Paul, which, I don't know, I'm sure it'll be all right. Drew McIntyre and Happy Corbin, I think it's going to be a good match. I know people hate Corbin. But he's actually a pretty good worker, and Drew, you know, you don't have a bad match with Drew McIntyre, so I think people are going to be surprised at the quality of that one. We've got the Usos against Shinsuke Nakamura and Rick Boogs. I don't know if Boogs and Nakamura are going to be the two that beat the Usos after all of this time, but I'd be happy to see it. My guess is the Usos are probably going to win. I think the match is going to be fun. People are super into Boogs. Boogs out there in front of... You know, 60,000 people curling blokes and pressing them over his head. I think people will get into that. Night two, which is Sunday, we've got the unification match, Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns. All of their angles I've enjoyed. I can't say that any of their angles, when they're done with them, I'm, like, more excited for the match. I just like watching, you know, Brock break stuff, and they've done a lot of that. So I think the match is going to be good. I think it's going to be a very, very good match, actually. And I have no idea who's going to win. And, you know, honestly, it probably doesn't matter because I don't know if it's going to be immediately, but eventually we're going to be going back to having two belts again. So Pat McAfee versus Austin Theory. I think they've done a good job building this matchup. I think Pat McAfee's great. Uh, still no no uh, Vince McMahon involvement, but at least as of a while ago, uh, there was going to be some Vince McMahon involvement in this match. Maybe we need to track ticket sales, and if they're still not, you know, through the roof, then we make our Vince McMahon announcement. Sammy Zayn versus Johnny Knoxville, anything goes. I mean, it's Johnny Knoxville and anything goes match. They're going to do some really stupid stuff. Hopefully he doesn't kill himself, and that's not even, I'm not joking, like, this guy, brain hemorrhage. You see him falling off that bull? Well, here he is doing an anything goes match with Sammy Zayn at WrestleMania for the 70,000 people, so we should all say a prayer. AJ Styles and Edge. I think the match will be good, provided it's like, you know, 18 minutes. If it's 40 minutes, I ain't going to be happy. Not a fan at all of the build. It's just not doing it for me. Edge was so much better as a babyface. I mean, this heel Edge stuff, droning on and on, I'm not into it. Then we've got the Tag Team Championship match. Zelina and Carmella against Sasha and Naomi, against Rhea and Liv, against Natty and Shayna. You know how they do these builds? Like, everybody involved has to lose a whole bunch of matches, so, like, they're all losers. And then we go to the pay-per-view to see, you know, who's the which, which ones are the least losers, whatever that term would be. Uh, the, the uh, what would the term be? The most uh, overachieving losers? Is that what it is? So, anyway, they've been doing this storyline that Zelina and Carmella can't get along. They got in a fight last night, and then it was a swerve. And then we got RK Bro defending against the Street Profits and Alpha Academy in a triple threat match, which I'm sure is going to be a great match. So you can all look forward to that. Bobby Lashley versus Omos expected to take place at Mania 38. Uh, Fightful Select reported Lashley and Omos was planned. 
Dave Meltzer noted it will depend on if Lashley is cleared in time. Omos is doing the thing where he's asking for a singles match, said Dave. He's going to have a singles match against somebody. But right now, the guy is Lashley on the list. It could end up being somebody else if Lashley is not cleared. Apparently, that would say that Lashley's not undergoing shoulder surgery because if he was undergoing surgery or had surgery, he would not be at WrestleMania. So I don't know. I don't know what the, the status is of Lashley, but I do know that I was a wrestler and I once suffered a separated, two separated shoulders, one here, one here. And when I watched the uh, Royal Rumble, that match with Brock, bro, I thought for sure as he's taking those bumps, this dude's going to separate his shoulder. So I don't know if that was the exact injury that he suffered, but I do know that when I separated my shoulders, I, uh, I could not even uh, bench press the bar which is 45 pounds. I'm not talking about the tag team of Cesaro and Sheamus. I'm talking the metal 45-pound bar. I couldn't, even, I couldn't even lift that thing. That's how bad my shoulders were. But I did not need surgery. And so uh, if he separated his shoulder, and he's really not done anything since January, and this will be April, it's possible that he will be okay to return uh, in time for the Royal Rumble. It depends on what grade of shoulder separation he has or had. So uh, we'll see what happens. We'll find out soon. And uh, we'll talk about Cody after the break. Stick around. Observer Live. All right, you can join us. 425-780-7566 is the phone number. And uh, don't forget, in about an hour and a half, myself and Lance Storm live Q&A. Video.f4wonline.com. Twitch.tv slash f4w video whatever uh whatever you want to ask him ask me anything he says one of those amas ask lance whatever you want i i can't guarantee i'll ask every question because if they're preponderously stupid i'm not gonna ask it but anyway and also don't forget my cameo f4w online it's not as fun to plug cameo when Sempy's not here because he has to start asking a bunch of Silly questions. All you need to know is I'm on Cameo F4W Online and it's worth the money. You know what I should do is I should just go through and read all my all my five-star reviews. Wouldn't that make for great radio? If I could do that, you know. Let's see what I got here. Hmm. I want to say thank you so much. The Cameo Awesome. Words can't describe how on-key you was. That's how you know that I didn't write it. Other people should take some notes on how to do cameos from you. I highly recommend you. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, Jason. There's more where that came from, everybody. Thank you, Brian. This is exactly what I needed. Frankly, this deserves as many stars as the Mox versus Danielson match. Huh? How about this one? Brian is absolutely fantastic. Might low-key be the best. That's not low-key, by the way. Be the best wrestling cameos out there. Delivered fast. Over-delivered on the request. Could easily be charging way, way more than he is. Thanks a lot, Brian. You're the man. Where's Mike to tell me I made these up? Come on. All right, let's get to the news. So last night on Raw, they've been doing this storyline. Have you been paying attention? I know some of you haven't because you don't watch this show. But Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins can't get a match at WrestleMania. Should I just do the Raw report? Nah, I'm going to save it. Let's just get to the point on Cody. We'll do the Raw report in the next segment. So uh, he can get a path to WrestleMania. And so long story short, they do a segment early where he is asked about not having a path to WrestleMania. And, uh, and as he's uh, talking about this, you hear the crowd and they're chanting Cody's name. WWE does not mute the chance for Cody, okay? So then later he comes out, and he's in the ring, and he's he's trying to steal uh, AJ Styles' match from him, the match with Edge. Everyone seems to want to face Edge. I guess they want to put in time at Mania. So, you know, obviously AJ is not down with this. And uh, there's another chant for Cody. And uh, interestingly enough, Seth Rollins acknowledges it and he says guys 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 rumors i forget the exact line that he used but it was it was a little weird 
that he kind of, you know, in his interview was like acknowledging that they were chanting that and he was kind of blowing it off. So if you hear stuff today, like, you know, people thinking that this Cody thing is is not going to happen. Well, uh, so anyway, that's what happened. Then uh, they do the match in the main event. Yeah, rumors are fun, but they don't create great moments. That's what that's how we acknowledge these chants. So don't get me wrong. It was weird. Okay. Now, do I think that we're still going to get Cody and Seth at WrestleMania? Yes. Yes, I do. Do I think it's possible that uh, there's, uh, you know, some wrench got thrown in the gears? It's possible. But do I still think that it's Seth and Cody? Yes. So they do the main event, and uh, he loses, and he gets really mad. He pulls the uh, the Bret Hart deal where he starts throwing things and chanting bad words. It was actually exactly like after Bret Hart lost that cage match to Sid in like 1996 or 7 or whatever it was. And he starts getting all angry and everything like that. And the fans start chanting for Cody again. And Seth Rollins grabs the mic. And this was not exactly what I said should be done yesterday. But it's pretty, it's pretty damn close. He said... I deserve my WrestleMania moment. And Raw is not taking place next week until I get it. So he's telling you that if you tune into Raw next week, you're going to find out what Seth is doing at WrestleMania. And it's going to be in the opening segment of the show. And they aren't telling you exactly what it is. This is virtually exactly what I said that they should do yesterday. Now that they've worked themselves into this corner. So, uh, whatever, whatever they're doing, as of yesterday, you know how this company works. As of yesterday, whatever they're doing, it's opening up Monday Night Raw next week. So, if that is the debut of Cody, it's opening up Raw next week. Which, if you look at the uh, hourly ratings for Raw, I mean, that is the best time to do it, is at the open of the show. Because everyone's turned off the show by the end, and, uh, you know, they... they it's going gonna, it's gonna to get its biggest numbers opening up the show. So do I think it's Cody? Yes. Is it possible it's not? Yes. Do I think it is? Yes. Can we make that clear? Yes. All right. So next week on Raw, this is also the lineup for the show because they did announce a bunch of stuff. Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns are going to be on Raw because it's the one time. To- oh, wait. That was Survivor Series. But anyway, they're going to be on Raw. Because this this month's excuse is it's mania season. Because every month there's another excuse for why people go brand to brand, even though we still have a brand extension. But anyway, they're going to be on the show next week. And uh, what else do we have? Where'd my raw lineup go? There it is. Uh, The Miz will face Rey Mysterio. Queen Zelina, Carmella, Shayna Baszler, and Natty will face Sasha Banks, Naomi, Rhea Ripley, and Liv Morgan. The Street Profits will be facing Alpha Academy because in every single one of these uh, multi-person matches, the only thing that they know how to book going back years is let's take turns beating everybody leading to the match. I don't know. Uh, I mean, by the time they're done, I don't care about the matches at all. You know, maybe maybe those uh, stand up for WWE blokes or they just can't wait to see. You know, it's a bunch of losers wrestling. So they're like, ah, this one's right up my alley. Smackdown. 2.147 million viewers. Second lowest audience for the show so far in 2022. 18 to 49, 8.58, which was up 1.8%. Ties the show's third highest rating of 2022. For the Walnut Brains. Rampage, 398,000 viewers, down 24.3%. Lowest audience in the history of the show, 0.13 and 18 to 49, down 40.9%. 24% lower than the lowest of all time for Rampage. Shall I go on, or would you all like to just freak out unnecessarily? I think some of you. Here's how we're going to do it. Spoiler alert. I'm going to tell you why the number's so low. If you don't want this to be spoiled, uh, go to the YouTube chat. Watch something else. So the show uh, aired after the NCAA men's basketball tournament. 
and uh, did not air until, I believe, 11.45 p.m. So a uh, bunch of people tuned in, saw basketball, and uh, didn't watch the show. So you should throw this number out. Just like you used to throw those Westminster dog show numbers out. Can you imagine Twitter in the uh, 90s when Raw and Nitro were going head to head? And uh, Raw was preempted for the Westminster dog show and the Nitro one. Can you imagine Twitter, all of the uh, WCW geeks throwing parties? That, you know, Raw was in the mud because they were preempted for a dog show. Wouldn't that have been fun? Thank God there was no Twitter back then. And of course, we had the Undertaker interview. He believes that today's product lacks, quote, a level of grit. I think things have changed, and I can't just say it's changed in wrestling. I think in all sports, it's a different generation. Call it evolution if you want. I don't think guys are leading the same lifestyles that guys in the past did. He said today's wrestlers are under constant surveillance, surveillance, which prevents them from doing many of the same things previous generations did. Yeah, they're under surveillance from themselves and their selfies that they put on Instagram and Twitter. It's not like they're being spied on. He says, I didn't have to worry about that because there weren't cell phones, he said. When I came up, the lo- you, had to, you, see, you had to have a, a Polaroid camera and point at yourself and go like that back in, back in my day. Then you had to shake the thing. When I came up, the locker room was a lot different. It was pretty crusty. You drove everywhere, right? Yeah, no one drives today from town to town wrestling. Uh, You didn't fly very often, so there were a few guys that had knives in their bags, guns in their bags. It was a different group of men. Not saying one's better better or one's worse. I think it's better when you don't have guns and knives in the locker room and a bunch of crusty guys who weren't afraid to use them. I think that's actually better now than it was back in the old days. He said the changes have led to a lack of grit. He says Brock Lesnar is an example of someone who still has that grit. When you watch Brock wrestle, you're interested because you know he's got this background. Not only is an amateur wrestler, professional wrestler, mixed martial artist, he doesn't do a bunch of crazy moves. Brock manhandles your ass. You get in there and you get thrown around and you get smashed. Roman has a little bit of that in him as well. When he wants to, Randy Orton has that in him as well. Younger WWE wrestlers, they are influenced more by superheroes and comic books. So, you know, he misses those days when guys had those amateur backgrounds, amateur wrestling, mixed martial arts. In the case of The Undertaker, basketball. Back in a moment with the Raw Report, Observer Live. I have uh, lots to get into here today. Don't forget, coming up in an hour and 20 minutes, myself and Lance Storm. For all of our video subscribers, you must subscribe. Video.f4wonline.com or twitch.tv slash f4wvideo. Uh, the Twitch subscription is actually free if you have Amazon Prime. Just go and hit that uh, subscribe button right there. There's an option. Use your Amazon Prime account. If you have Amazon Prime, you may not know this, you get a free Twitch subscription every month. One. Anyone you want. And uh, twitch.tv slash f4wvideo. You can uh, use your Amazon Prime. You pay nothing, but you get all of the benefits. One of which is this Landstorm show at 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. And in fact, uh, in just a couple of weeks, if you sign up today, uh, and actually your subscription every month, you can do it again with Amazon Prime, so you can just do this forever. But uh, the one month, if you get the one month subscription now, that will cover our post-WrestleMania shows with myself, Vinny, and Craig. They will be live, twitch.tv slash F4W video. So uh, sign up today at Twitch. Join us for all of this fun. And uh, let's get going on this Raw Report. Austin's music hits. The place goes crazy. Out comes Stone Cold Kevin Owens. He's got the bald thing on and 316 shirt, which I'm sure they're selling a bunch of today. Jean shorts, knee braces. He's got the bald cap on, so he looks bald. He did not shave a goatee, which I don't know why. Because he looks like a guy who can grow some facial hair pretty fast. But he comes out and he he pretends he's Steve Austin and he he does the deal for WrestleMania. And of course, then he asks for, you know, the bloke to uh to throw the beers at him. And uh, they did do the deal where they hit Austin's music and everybody went crazy thinking, ah, they won't fool us twice. Well, of course they'll fool you twice. So the guy's throwing beers, and he's acting like he can't catch him. And so he calls the guy into the ring, and, of course, he gives the guy the stunner. Who did not take, by the way, as good a bump as that camera guy last week who took, like, the greatest stunner bump in about uh, 25 years. Probably since uh, they did that uh, 
that one, uh, whatever, I think it was Survivor Series or whatever, where they were going to unify the titles and Jericho ended up winning. And uh, Steve Austin, it was like Rock versus Jericho and Austin versus Angle. And then the winners faced off for the title in the main event. I can't remember what happened last night without notes, but I remember this. Anyway, Steve Austin gives Kurt Angle a stunner, and Kurt Angle took the greatest bump for a stunner you ever saw in your life. Just stood straight up and fell like a tree, and he was dead. It was awesome. This guy didn't take a bump that good. Then we had Seth Rollins uh, backstage asking about no path to WrestleMania, and we got the Cody chant and everything like that. Vengeance 2001. Yes, thank you. Uh, Rey Mysterio and Dominic versus Ziggler and Rude. Ah! This is a classic example of this company. They have all these problems. And then they come up with stupid solutions. And then when they come up with stupid solutions, they screw those up. Okay? So the problem is nobody watches NXT 2.0. Except really old dudes. The guys that, you know, took selfies with their Polaroid. So they want some they want some new they want new viewers. They want people to watch this show. Well, it's a it's a C show that nobody cares about. So what do you do? Well, let's get some raw talent on NXT. That'll boost the numbers. All right. Well, who should we get? Well, you know who's a really good worker is uh, Dolph Ziggler. So they send Ziggler and Rude. Down to uh, down to NXT, and the very first thing they do, like Rude gets a, a, a but you know the f- three hundred people or whatever they're in the building. I don't even know. It may be even less than that, but they all cheer and everything like that. But Rude shows up at NXT, and the first thing he does is cut a promo about how you know I lose uh, nineteen out of twenty matches, but boy can I steal the show. I was like, I mean maybe maybe promos like that appeal to the 63-year-old average viewer of NXT 2.0. But, bro, when you say that you win one out of every 20 matches, dude, I don't care one bit about watching this stupid feud. So then, yeah, you guys think I'm making this up, but this is what happened. So then uh, they announced that, you know, uh, Ziggler is going to be in line for an NXT championship match. So the first thing they do is they put him in a match with Tommaso Ciampa, and and Ciampa pins him. So then they they add it. It's not going to be a three-way. So then, what happens next? Well, there's another match, and Dolph Ziggler gets pinned again. Total loser. So, somehow this is supposed to make me want to watch NXT more. So then, you know, this guy that can't win to save his life. And by the way, they're tag matches, so they could pin Bobby Roode, but they don't. They pin Ziggler, repeatedly. So then Ziggler goes, and he wins the NXT championship. So he's the champion now, and uh, Braun Breaker is going to face Ziggler over WrestleMania weekend. And so here, their new idea is, they announce, tonight on NXT, Braun Breaker is going to face Bobby Roode, who, by the way, has not been beaten through any of this because they've only been pinning Dolph Ziggler. So, so Braun Breaker is going to face Robert Roode, who is, of course, from the main roster coming down because their idea is, you know, we want more people to watch the show because it's like, you know, the A-show guys are coming to NXT. So I swear to God, they announced this match. The number one contender for the NXT title is facing, he's got to go through Ziggler's guy. They do Ray and Dominic versus Ziggler and Rude and Dominic Mysterio rolls up and then Frog splashes Bobby Roode, and he pins him in the middle of the ring. Clean. There's like, there's no uh, no interference, no Braun Bray, nothing. He just out-wrestled and pinned Robert Roode. Why would I want to see this match? How could I possibly care? Why would I tune in Tuesday to see Bobby Roode versus Braun Breaker? After he gets pinned in a nothing match, clean in the middle of the ring. These are their... And by the way, the overarching story here is, have you watched the NXT ratings? This has meant nothing. Zero. Zilch. Nobody's tuning in because of these guys you've brought down from the main roster. And I'm sure that internally it's like, well, it's Rude and Ziggler. Of course nobody's tuning in. Wait a bigger star. That's the problem. Maybe the problem is uh, they haven't won a single... Either of them have not won one single solitary match except 
when Ziggler actually beat Braun Breaker to win the championship. I gotta get people to watch. We need young... Anyway, so that was a match. And then afterwards, Miz beat up Ray, stole his mask, and now he wants uh, Logan Paul to wear it next week, which is part... So, you know, I've got a, uh, an, inter- an interview coming up with Phil Strum for USA Today. It's a video interview. It's going to be up next week. And, uh, and we were talking about this, and I won't spoil the interview. You can watch the interview. But we had a long talk about how in the old days... A celebrity was brought to WWF, WWE, and ultimately was to get over a wrestler. You know, uh, the idea was to get over Wendy Richter. The idea was to get over Hulk Hogan. The idea was to get over Steve Austin. You know, that's what the point was. You didn't bring in a celebrity. It's not like, oh, you know, let's bring in Liberace because we want to get over Liberace. The idea was Mr. T was the biggest television star in all of America, legitimately from the A-team. And the idea was that he would come in and a bunch of people would watch WrestleMania to see Mr. T. But then Hogan was the one who was going to get the rub. It wasn't about making Mr. T a bigger star. So this Logan Paul thing, this is not about giving the rub to Ray or Dominic or Miz. You can see from the moment this began, the point is to get over Logan Paul. So the the storyline is that Logan Paul was a huge fan of Rey Mysterio. Well... Miz has disrespected Ray, and now Miz wants Logan Paul to disrespect Ray by wearing this ma- mask next week. Just like they're both from Cleveland, and Miz buried Cleveland, and Logan Paul was like, why are you burying Cleveland? I like Cleveland. The idea is to get over Logan Paul. So then Rollins is backstage, and uh, you know he's upset about this whole WrestleMania thing, and and uh, he has been told. So so what happened was in the Ray match, he came out before the match started and he did a promo on the ramp. It's actually during the match. So uh, Pierce says, you know, interrupting a match is not how you, you get on a WrestleMania card. Even though literally on Friday, the way that Natty and Shayna got onto the WrestleMania card was by interfering in a match. So then they decide, you know what? We are going to give you an opportunity. So as we'll get to later, AJ and uh, Rollins in the main event, winner gets edge. Omos beat Cruz and Commander Aziz. Bro, if they're going to do those post-mania cuts, Cruz and Aziz need to shut off them phones. They got stacked like cordwood and pinned together in a minute 49. Stacked on top of each other. It actually would have been quicker, but this ref was being all, oh, his shoulder's not all the way down. So it was like everyone looked stupid for like 10 seconds while they tried to figure out how to get their shoulders down to get pinned. And then Omos cut a promo. He wants a singles match at Domania. So no Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. We had the AJ promo with Styles that set up the main event. We had a Zelina and Carmella segment where Carmella's not paying attention. She's on her phone. Zelina gets mad. She breaks the phone. Zelina says she's ugly. Carmella says she's a hobbit. They get in a brawl. They beat each other up. Uh, Fast forward. It's a swerve. They did this just to fool everybody. But in order to do swerve, we broke a $1,000 phone and we beat the crap out of each other in a backstage segment where, in storyline, nobody was around. We had Natty and Shayna versus Rhea and Liv Morgan. When Liv Morgan got pinned after the heart attack, we got to beat everybody, make sure they're all geeks, and we'll do the title match. And then Zelina beats up Rhea Ripley, and Carmella attacks Natty and Shayna. She beat, actually, Natty and Shayna up by herself. Carmella. And then they get in the ring, and everyone wants them to fight, but they hug and they smile. Which, at the end of the day, when you really think about the swerve... Bro, they broke a a, a $1,200 iPhone or whatever and beat the crap out of each other for a swerve that they didn't even need to do the swerve because they attacked everybody from behind. Whole thing is nonsense. Speaking of nonsense, Becky did a promo. You fans chose Bianca Belair over me. Bro, She was so over at SummerSlam, way more over than Bianca. Then she turns heel. At all the house shows, she's cheered way more than Bianca. But the storyline is, you fans chose Bianca 
over me. Is that supposed to be the heat where, like, it's obvious this is all BS and, and they actually love her, but now they're supposed to hate her because they love her and she thinks they hate Is that the heat or what is this? So this sucked. I'm sick of this. If I hear one more you fans promo. We had a segment with Austin Theory. It's Finn Balor and Austin Theory. Pat McAfee's on commentary. Of course, Pat McAfee does a distraction, and uh, Austin Theory is pinned. Uh, McAfee's all excited about it. This is not nearly as good as what they did on SmackDown, but it was, it was fine. Just something to do. Then we had Randy Orton and Riddle beating the Alpha Academy in a non-title match because, in fact, everybody has to be beaten. We're all geeks until we find out who is the most overachieving geek on the pay-per-view. Uh, ended up with, uh, finish was awesome. Gable did the Chaos Theory suplex. Riddle flipped over. Bro Derek, clean pin in the middle of the ring. And then Otis uh, beats up Orton. And uh, then Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford beat up Riddle. So, yes, it is a three-way at uh, WrestleMania. We had Dana and Reggie beating Tamina and Akira Tozawa. You know how the feud's going. We've already got the kiss, but now we're building to the kiss that we already got. Because time goes backwards. And then, of course, AJ beat Seth. 20, they had a great 22-minute match, and then Edge just runs down, whacks AJ Styles, or, uh, yeah, AJ with the chair. And so AJ wins via DQ. Seth is angry. Fans boo. And we got our post-match angle. I've seen better shows. Back in a moment, Observer Live. Bro. God. Listen, I love all my top-tier YouTube subscribers, but some of the people in the free chat, like, what is going on with you people? I went in there for one second during the break, and some bloke's talking about how Adam Cole was better off in NXT. How? How was Adam Cole better off in NXT? Because he was the champion there? Bro, he's being watched by significantly more people now in AEW. He just headlined a pay-per-view that's doing like 180,000 buys or something like that. He's going to be getting another championship match on television. He's making way more money. He gets to hang out with his girlfriend all day. In w Name one way that he was better off in NXT than in AEW. One way! I can't even go look. I can't bear it. Holy smokes. But you know what? If you're top tier on YouTube... If you're one of my top tier buddies, or twitch.tv slash F4W video, which you can sign up using your Amazon Prime account. Well, in about an hour, myself and Lance Storm live Q&A. You can even ask me a question if you want. It's cheaper than Cameo. Live Q&A, video.f4wonline.com, twitch.tv slash F4W video, 2 Pacific, 5 Eastern. Make sure you check it out, and uh, we're going to have a good time. So uh, that's the plan, and that is it from this show here. I want to thank uh, Mike, as always. Hope his knee gets better. All of our uh, top tiers on YouTube, Twitch homies. We'll talk to you again next time, Wrestling Observer Live.